Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha Kodash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew, who the world ignorantly calls God, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And the Racha Kodash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Truth, double honest of the Apostles of Great Millstone, who I learned the truth from. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect. So I just wanted to do a uh, response video to this uh, question that I got on a um, on a, a video that I did uh, two days ago. Um, there's a question. It's by channel name uh, Woke Lion. He asks, why does the Bible say we will be cursed forever? What does that mean? All right. So. Once again, it says, why does the Bible say we will be cursed forever? What does that mean? I had somebody respond to, to him, which basically is the answer. But, you know, I just get scriptures just to back it up. Um, the truth always responded and said the word forever in this context means until the end of the modern age, meaning until Esau's rulership ends with Christ's return. Shalom. And I just responded. And I said, Lord willing, I will answer this with a sit down video, you know, which um the Lord put it on my spirit to do now. So um, I want to, you know, just uh, respond to this because this word forever is used in, um, you know, different, different forms or right? different uh, forms in the scriptures. And, you know, you have to be, um, you know, you have to be able to exercise your, um, your, your spiritual understanding in order to, you know, receive what is being said properly in the scriptures when you see this word. Okay. So uh, just before I actually get the scriptures on that, so I just went online and I went to this website. It's called English uh, Stacks Exchange, all right? And it's an English uh, language and usage. So the question was asked, it says, should one say for forever or forever? All right, so that's the question. It says, I always wondered about this. When describing an exaggerated amount of time, should one say for forever or forever? All right, and that's actually what happens in the scriptures okay the the um what well, is not even an exaggeration an exaggeration but when you look when we go into the word forever when we go into the hebrew word it it literally is just talking about a um a time period so it says um to give an example it says as in i have been waiting forever or salak it says i have been waiting for forever or i have been waiting forever says the argument being that the word forever is in itself a period of time or it isn't all right so let's see the answer it says forever in this context is an adverb so once again you got to remember about the context that is being used you know the word forever is being used in all right it says you could also say that it is basically forever without the space all right because and that's how it's written in, in the scriptures a lot of times uh, actually all the times we find a word forever in the uh you know in the in the um king james bible you're never going to see it together all right you're always going to see it spaced out forever all right and, and these two words most of the time they're actually two separate hebrew words but sometimes there are you can you'll see it there's uh it's one hebrew word together it says without space it says as such if you're saying that you have been waiting for a very long time then the latter usage is right okay so the latter if you're waiting for something for a very long time you would say what forever it says in the former usage okay which the former usage would be for forever it says it is used as a noun it does it does not describe how long you have been waiting instead as a noun, it represents what you're waiting for. In other words, it means you're waiting for forever, as in a period of time itself, which may itself and either refer to an uh, ind indeterminate uh, uh, point in time in the future or an indefinitely long duration of time. Okay? Indefinitely long duration of time. For instance, when somebody says, yo, uh, I, I, a football player or a basketball player got suspended indefinitely, that doesn't mean that um, they're just there. They're no longer allowed in, you know, to, to play sports again. It just means that that time period that they have been uh, suspended 
is unknown, okay? Because I would say, for instance, there was a uh, football player on the Cowboys. Um, I forget, I forgot his name, but he got suspended because he got caught using, um, he got caught uh, um, with coke, I believe. I believe it was coke, or he got caught uh, in a uh, domestic abuse, a domestic abuse case. I forget, like, once again, I forgot his name. He was a defensive, uh, a defensive end, and he got suspended indefinitely. All right, and um, also with you know like Josh Gordon with smoking weed. He's been suspended indefinitely, but as you see, he was able to come back to play because indefinitely doesn't mean uh, eternity, you know, uh, of, you know, uh, eternally, all right? It just means of an un, unspe unspecified point in time. So, you know, just want to bring that that out real quick before I get into the scripture. So now this is the scripture that the, that the uh, brother asked, all right, where he said that we would be cursed forever. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. All right. It says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hast, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he's commanded thee. So we, we, we were and have been and are currently still under the curses. All right. Of Deuteronomy 28, you no know, uh, 15 through 68. Because we sinned, all right, and we didn't keep the commandments and statutes that our Heavenly Father has given us by way of the uh, of the agreement of the covenant that we made with him, all right, by the hand of Moses. So because we didn't keep those, um, because we didn't keep our, you know, uh, side of the uh, of the covenant or the agreement of the agreement, we were cursed. All right. And it says, verse 46, and these shall be upon thee for a sign and, and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. All right, so these curses, which were going to be a sign and a wonder, meaning you're going to be able to know who the true Israelites are. All right, it's going to be a sign because of the curses that uh, uh, that that are upon them. And these curses, we are living out, you know, uh, um, until this very day. All right, till to the year 2020, and that is a sign. All right, that has been upon you know our forefathers and upon their seed, which is us, until you know this very day. And it says, "Upon thy seed forever." Now, when we go into the word forever, once again, you got to get understanding of the context, right? You go into the word forever right here. It's uh, for, which is eyed. All right. The, the Hebrew word is eyed. Now, in, in, in the word eyed here, this is using as a, um, it's a prep, uh, pre uh, preposition. All right. Or it could be used as a conjunction. Right here is being used as a conjunction because uh, the word for is being is being conjuncted uh, with ever. So it says until, while, to, to the point that even, uh, so like it says to the point that so that even. Now the word I'd also is can be used to uh, to to uh, um, as a form of space. All right, as in combination or of time. All right, so. Once again, you have to have the context of, of why, of what the word is being used for. And it's being used in conjunction, all right, until, so it'd be until, while, to the point that, or so that even, right? Now we're going to go to the next word. It's ever, all right? I'd in the Hebrew word is, um, I will lum, all right? I will lum. And that, that Hebrew word for I, uh, I will lum, which you get the word ever, all right? The English word ever. It says right here, a long dur duration, antiquity, all right, Futuri uh, futurity, forever, ever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, ancient world, all right, ancient time, long time of past, all right, I'm just going to read all of them. It says a future forever, always, continuance, existence, perpetual, everlasting, indefinite, or, un or unending future, uh, eternity, so what? Once again, as a, as a uh, a person here says, the truth always, the word forever in this context uh, means until the end of a modern age. And that modern age, or I should say, that age that we're speaking about is the age of Esau. Okay, because it's not talking about a continuance existence. We're not going to always be cursed in a continuance existence. Although the word I will um can mean a continuance existence and we will uh and we can uh, show you where that is at. All right. It also it can mean an unending future, which that's why the scripture says that Israel 
shall be a world without end because our kingdom is going to be of an unending future, okay? But our curses is simply a, just a long duration of an indefinite time period, okay? Because it's really indefinite to us because we don't know when it's going to actually come to an end. That's why um, I'll get this. You know, I had this back here, but I'll just pull it up now. Mark chapter 13, verse uh, 32 it says, but of that day and of that hour, no, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father, only Yahweh, all right, himself knows the definite time period of our, uh, of the ending of our, of our, you know, uh, being under these, these curses, all right, because when Yahweh Shah returns, when Yah that's when the curses end, all right, when, when we are in the kingdom, that's when the curses end. But until that point, we're still going to be in this age, all right? We're still going to be in this time period. And then in and, and, and this time period, underneath the hand of our enemies, we are cursed, okay? So it's an indefinite time period unto us, but it's the, but unto the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he knows exactly when the curses are going to be uplifted. He knows exactly when he's going to send back Yahweh Shai. He knows exactly when the kingdom of heaven is going to be established because he says what? He declares the end from the beginning. With him, there is no end or beginning. You know, he's the ancient of days. He's before time. All right. He doesn't he doesn't he he doesn't look at things on a on a on a time scale. You see? So when we go now to um once again, he says that these curses was going to be on us forever. All right, that lets you know that it's a what? It's a it's up until a long duration of time. Now, just to uh, get another precept, this is the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shalt dis discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. That is part of the curses. When you read the book of Deuteronomy 28th chapter, it tells you that we are going to be sent, you know, to a uh, to a land that uh, neither us nor thy fathers have known, and we shall worship uh, other gods wooden stone. Okay. So this was the uh, um, this is a part of the curses, all right. It says, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land that which thou knowest not, mainly over here in Babylon, the Great America. It says, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So the Lord, you know, if you take this out of context, if you don't understand what is being said, you would say, well, well, that means that the Lord is we're always going to be as this man, you know, was saying we're always going to be cursed. You know, as Woke Lion said, you know, does that, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're always going to be cursed? Is the Lord always going to be, you know, in, uh, uh, angry, angry at us? An unending future of, of anger that the Lord is going to have towards the nation of Israel? Is that what this saying? Now, as we know, the Lord said, let me get this real quick. Uh, what's that? 1 Corinthians 14. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse... 1 Corinthians 14, verse, um, stop hearing me one second. Uh, 33. All right. And this is something, you know, I, that I've learned, you know, when I first came into this truth, <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, a, a person who brought me to the truth, he, because I had questions, you know, because certain things in the scriptures, if you don't have the understanding, your understanding can make it the way you interpret it can be contradictory, all right? The scriptures aren't contradictory, but your interpretation or your understanding could be contradictory. And this is something that you always have to put in mind when you're reading the scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. And this is why also you have to ask for the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, to give you the Holy Spirit, to teach you all things, to, 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 to give you the uh, the ability to understand the breakdowns in the, in, the, in the precepts and the dark sayings, because your own mind will will, you know, if you're trying to lean upon your own understanding, you know, and you're being wise in your own conceits, you will end up being confounded, okay? So you have to understand this, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, for God, power, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So the Lord is not the author of confusion. He's not going to put in, in the Bible things that are that are contradictory or that are, you know, uh, confusing, you know, if, if you are you know, spiritual. Okay. He's not going to contradict himself. So when we read here, it says, I read it again. It says, even thou, 
uh, it says, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. The same word here forever is the same word that we read in the book of Deuteronomy 28th chapter is I in I will all right? Meaning what? A long duration of time. Once again, in this context, it's talking about long duration of time. And then to prove that, we'll go here to book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 18. It says, who is like God, Yahweh, power, uh, who is, Salaki, who is a power like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity? And passive by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage, because the remnant of his heritage, the elect of Israel, is who the Lord is going to pass a part in the iniquity of. Okay, because they're the ones that's going to repent. They're the ones that's going to uh, believe and turn back into Yahweh through His Son Yahweh Shai. But um, all of Israel is not going to uh, is not going to uh, do that on this go around. But going on, it says um, the remnant of his heritage, he retaineth not his anger forever. Because he delighteth in mercy. You see that? So when you read Jeremiah 17, it says, What? For ye, for, uh, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. But in, in Micah 7, verse 18, it says, He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. So once again, to the unlearned, to the unskilled, all right, you would say, well, that's contradictory. But when you go into the scripture, and when you go into the breakdown of the word of, of forever, here it's only eyed okay it's only it's only eyed now it's not it's not eyed uh i will um it's just eyed now when you go here it says perpetuity forever continuing future all right uh forever of of future time of continuance existence so the lord is saying right here that he is not going to withhold his anger for a continuing continuance existence it's not going to be for a continuing future, okay? It was only going to be for a long duration of time. And to us, that time is an indefinite time because we don't know exactly when the Lord's anger is going to be fully taken up off of us, okay? We don't know exactly the day or the hour as spoken about in Mark, all right? Only the Heavenly Father knows. But we know that it has an ending. We know that it has a time period because we know that he just said here, that he's not going to retain his anger forever. So we know that it's talking about an actual point in time. It's just a, 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 a time in the future that we don't know. Okay. So going on, it says, and we, and he will turn again and will have compassion upon us. So right there, he can't have compassion upon us if he's, uh, if he's going to have continual anger for all of eternity. You see, it says he will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Okay. And the Lord said what? That he is faithful and that he will in that and in, in that his word, you know, is not going to return unto him void and that he's going to perform the promises that he, he promised unto Abraham. All right. The oaths that he uh, gave unto Isaac and he confirmed it in Jacob. He's going to he's going to perform that. So that, that lets you know that his anger, even though it says it's going to be forever in, 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 the, in the English, you have to get the understanding during the context that it's only talking about a period of time, a long duration, okay? Which we have been under that long duration of, of these curses. But the curses has an expiration date. And, and to prove that, we get that in Book of Revelation uh, 22. I'm going to go straight to the... I'll start at 1. All right, this is talking about, you know, uh, in the kingdom of heaven, which will be on earth. It says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, uh, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the land. And in the midst of the street of it and on the, either side of the river, there uh, was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruits every month. And the leaves of the trees were the healing of the nation. Now, this is all speaking about, you know, parabolic is speaking about in the kingdom. Okay. But the point is right, verse 3, it says, and there shall be no more curse. All right. Now, where was the curse at? The curses are in Deuteronomy. All right. Only Israel were the people who the Lord cursed because of their transgressions. Once again, we, we, uh, which we read. But in the kingdom, that's when the curses are going to be uplifted. When Yahweh returns and delivers the elect, 
takes down this this uh, current age, this current world, all right, this current time period, and sets up the everlasting kingdom. It's going to be what? No more curse is going to be upon the children of Israel. So that curse is not something that is uh, unending. It says, but the throne of God and the and, and the and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And who are the servants? Those are starting with the uh, the prophets, okay, the 144,000, all right, and the uh, rest of the elect that believe, all right, the men, women, and children that believe and have faith on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They're not, that's when the curses are going to be fully uplifted off of us, okay? So it's not going to be something that's going to be uh, uh, um, for all of eternity. Now, there's certain points in the Bible where you we're going to have the you're going to see the word Iwalam, right? And it actually is talking about an unending uh, future. For instance, <clears throat> when we go to um, let's see, Daniel's two verse forty four. Let's see if it's here. Yeah, it says, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, And then the days of these kings shall the God of heaven, which is Yahweh, set up a kingdom, which he's going to set up that kingdom by bringing his son back, Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, uh, um, which is set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the, and, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. You see that? Now we go into the word forever here. It's Ilam, but it's really I I Iwalam. It's the same word, you know. Iwalam, they just have it for an Aramaic here, but it's really uh um, you know, still the I I it should be Iwalam, but Ilam is, you know, synonymous. Actually, here it goes corresponding to right here, Iwalam. You see? So you go there, it says the same thing perpetuity long duration but now it says that it's going to it's never going to be destroyed so this kingdom that the lord is going to establish is never going to be destroyed so in this instance or in this context you will refer to this as what an unending future or eternity all right or continuance existence you see because that kingdom is going to be the kingdom of heaven which is going to be set up uh, set up by yahweh shot all right now when i have made mention earlier which I just go back here and show you. I may mention earlier that in the book of Mark, it tells you um, um, that what no man knoweth the time, all right, of that, of that day or that hour, only Yahweh knows it. Now, once again, that time is a, a indefinite time, meaning what? It's a secret unto us. We we don't know when that time that time period is going to happen. All right, we just know the signs of the end, but we don't know exactly the the day and the hour. Because when you go to this, when you go to the root word of Iwalam, all right, Ilam, it says what? To conceal, hide, be hidden, be concealed, secret. You see? So that time period, all right, of us, of 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 us be of these curses being uplifted, that day when Yahweh Shai returns, it's concealed, it's hid. All right, that time is hid. That indefinite time, and that's why it's called indefinite. Because it's a time period that is not definite, it's not defined. It wasn't. We, you can't. You're not going to find in the scriptures where it says in this time, at, at this, at this hour, at this day, is Yahweh Shai going to return? And you know, uh, uh, December twenty fourth, two thousand and twenty one, is the day that Yahweh Shai is going to return. No, all right. No man knoweth that day. There is a day, and only Yahweh knows that day. And this, and that time is concealed. You see. So that's the that's the root word of of Iwalam. Okay? Iwalam, the root word is Ilam which goes back into being hid, uh, a hid or concealed. All right? So let's see what else we got here. This is um Jeremiah chapter 31 verse I started 31 it says behold the days come saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was a husband to them, saith the Lord. Yep, and that's why, that's why the curses came upon us, because we broke the agreement, all right? We broke the agreement by breaking, by transgressing the laws, okay? So it says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the, with the house of Israel. After those days, all right, after those long durations, 
of, of that time period. After that, that age of Esau is ended. After this time period that we're in. All right. That's the days that is being talked about. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. All right. Why? Because that, that covenant, all right, that new covenant, which is established upon better promises, which comes by way of the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, all right, being that perfect lamb, the new covenant, the new agreement, the Lord is going to put the laws in us. You see, he's going to put the laws in us. So he's going to make the part, the our part of the agreement, he's going to make it to where we can't, we can't uh, um, uh, transgress our part anymore. We can't go off. We can't break our part of the agreement. All right. Because so, he says right here, which my covenant, they break. So we broke the agreement before. All right. The old the old agreement, you know, which is why we got the curses put on us. But the Lord, after those days, after these times, after the long duration of the curses, a.k.a. in the kingdom where there should be no more curse, he's going to put the laws in us so that we cannot break the agreement anymore. And then for, therefore, he will be our God and they shall be my people. Meaning that we're going to be, uh, 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 that we want to have that long, that I should say, that unending uh, eternity of uh, of the kingdom. All right, verse thirty four it says, and they shall and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh. All right, because that's what the prophets have to do. We have to go out and teach our people uh, to, uh, uh, to tell them to repent. You know, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, telling them to to come back to their power. But in the kingdom. All of Israel is going to know, you know, uh, who their who their God is, who their father is, Yahweh. So you're not going to have a need of anybody going out to teach anymore. All right. It says, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. And that's the curses being uplifted. You see, that's the curse. Because if we have no more sin, if we have no more iniquity, then why would we be punished anymore? You see, that's why the curses is not something that is going to be for eternity. It's only for a long duration of time. It says, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon of, and of the stars of a, uh, of a light by night, which divideth the sea, when the waves thereof roar, the Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart before, uh, from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation for before me forever. All right, hey, there goes that word forever again. So the Lord said, "What if the sun and the if the sun and, and the moon and the stars are you know depart, and the sun and the moon and the stars is is a is a or is a um a mechanism or or was created for us to to be able to tell tell days apart, all right, to tell time apart, all right." And the Lord said, so Lord said, said what? If those ordinances, those orders of, of what the day is and what the night is, if those depart from me, then will the seed of Israel cease from being a nation. Now, when you go into this word uh, forever here, which is uh, interesting, it's actually yo, yo, um, yo, yo, all right? Yo, one, which means day or time, all right? Or year, you see? Days or lifetime. So the Lord said here, <laughs> if the day, if how you tell time, all right, which is what the sun, you know, the day, the night. Okay, how you know, you know, what uh, the day is, is because the sun is out. How you know the night is because you know the stars and the moon is out. If if the way you tell time stops, is that that if that ceases from being, uh, um, uh, 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 um, you know, the up in the sky, or if that ceases from uh, being an ordinance, then Israel will cease from being a, a, um, a seed. All right, or Salakia from cease from being a nation. Meaning, as long as there's days then israel is going to have days all right as long as there's a there is time all right then israel is going to have time meaning that israel is always going to be the lord's chosen as as long as day and night exist israel is always going to exist in the eyes of yahweh okay so you know i believe that was it you know lord actually also like let me get this one Deuteronomy 30 verse 1, and this just you know, brings everything all together. It says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse. You see, so the blessings were, were going to come upon us and the curses were going to come upon us also, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy power hath driven thee. 
and, and shalt return to the Lord thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I have commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy power has scattered thee. You see, so the Lord said, yeah, even after the curses come upon you, which we're living in this time right now, there's going to be a time period where the Lord is going to have compassion on us and return us from everywhere that he's driven us out because of the curses, because we transgress, and he's going to have compassion upon us and return us to our land. All right. And that's going to be by way of Yahweh Shai returning in, the, in, in establishing that kingdom, OK, which shall never be destroyed, but which shall break and consume all other nations, man. OK, and the way and the reason why that that kingdom is never going to be destroyed is because the Lord is going to put the law, statute, commandments in us. He's going to give us those immortality, those incorruptible or immortal bodies. Therefore, we would never have an end. All right. We would never have an ending. What is that? Isaiah 45. I quoted it earlier, so I might as well just get it. We are never going to have an ending. Uh, Isaiah 45, 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. OK, that word everlasting is, yep, I will lie. OK, and now in this context, it's, it's literally speaking about a continuance existence. All right. Or always or eternity. All right. It says Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. The world, the age of, of Israel. OK, the age of Israel is going to be a world without end. A time period, a, a, a time period, a long duration, right? For for perpetuity. Go here, perpetuity or continuing future, and that's all. And that's the blessings of Jacob. That's the promises that the Lord promised unto us, in in, in by way of His Son Yahweh Shai for uh, coming back and, and establishing that promise. You know, so hey, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect, and it was edifying. You know, answered your question. You know about the curses all right the curses only is only for a time period a long duration and we're coming to the end of that time period all right and 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 coming into the time period where our kingdom our blessings is going to be for a time period with a without an end all right so you know with that lord willing you know this was edifying call lawyer how